rentrer des potes de caoutchouc Pour patauger dans la gadou She was an icon here in France, a British actress, singer and muse to many. Today, we're remembering Jane Birkin, who's died at the age of 76. Just have a look at the front pages of the French newspapers the day after her death. Without Jane, says the liberation, the Parisian declares our tears won't change anything, and humanity leads with her name was Jane. A British woman who was a cultural idol for the French, and the lover and collaborator of one of their most adored singers, Serge Gainsbourg. She even has a luxury Hermes handbag named after her. I'm joined by our music critic, Marjorie Hash. And what do you think it was that made um, the French fall in love with her so deeply? Well, first and foremost, it was that she loved France herself. She completely embraced French culture without pretending to be French. And she was always very, very British, but the love was there. A bit like Charlotte Rampling and later on uh, Kristen Scott Thomas, they're uh, female uh, artists and superstars from Britain who have managed to uh, embrace France and be loved just as much. OK, well, let's take a look back at her life. Here's Liza Kaminov. She charmed France with her English grace, style and accented French and made France her home. Actress and singer Jane Birkin has died at the age of 76. The star had been suffering from health problems in recent years that had forced her to cancel concerts. Daughter of a Royal Navy officer and actress Judy Campbell, Jane Birkin was born in London in 1946 and grew up in England. Birkin was thrown into the spotlight in 1968 at the age of 22 to star in the film Slogan alongside singer-songwriter Serge Gainsbourg, with whom she had a turbulent love affair for 12 years. The Gainsbourg Birkin relationship was famously provocative and tempestuous. With her soft voice, she quickly became a sex symbol, and the two recorded a raunchy duet in 1969, a worldwide hit that was banned in several countries due to its eroticism. The pair gave birth to their daughter, Charlotte Gainsbourg, but soon split up in 1980. Serge Gainsbourg continued to write songs for Jane, but Birkin walked her own path, appearing in the credits of some 60 films and releasing albums like Baby Alone in Babylon in 1983 and Amour des Fantes in 1990. During that decade, she began a new life with film director Jacques Doyon, the father of her third daughter, Lou. He directed her in three major films in her career, The Prodigal Daughter, The Pirate and Comedy. She was also a 70s fashion icon with her bohemian chic look and distinctive fringe, inspiring the Hermes brand to name the famous Birkin bag after the artist, an item still sold today. In the following years, the actress suffered from illness following the loss of her first daughter, Kate Barry, whom she had with composer John Barry, and the death of her father and Serge Gainsbourg. Now, Marjorie Jane Birkin's legend was so tied in with Serge Gainsbourg, but after his death in 1991, she did reinvent herself, didn't she? Yeah, it took her about several years because until then, all her music, even after they'd split up, was uh, in part composed or written by Gainsbourg. But after that, in 1998, she came out with her first album that was called Elle Légère, Lightly. And for that, uh, well, it was very much written by talented French artists such as uh, Etienne Dao, who she would go on to work with uh, regularly throughout her career, but also French rapper MC Solar, uh, Marc Lavoine and another 60s icon, uh, the one and only Françoise Hardy. And now a few years later in 2008, she released uh, Enfant d'hiver, uh, where she writes her own songs. And this is the first time she does that. She picks on text that she'd um, started scribbling 10 years before and even went back uh, to her diaries that she wrote when she was 12 years old to compose the texts. OK, well, France is certainly in mourning um, for the loss of their favourite Anglaise. Here's Védica Bal. Her name is immortalised in the world's most iconic handbag. And here in Paris, outside the home that Jane Birkin shared with French music icon Serge Gainsbourg, both English and French fans gather to mourn her. Jane embodied precisely everything that I love. 
which is to say a mix of England and France, with a double glance, with chic, with a perfect accent. It represents a part of France, a part of French history. So yes, we're very sad to hear this news. There was something about her that they that, that, that touched the French spirit that was also very French, and it's kind of it's very hard to articulate, but you feel it when you see it. Though Birkin was British-born, she lived in and became a style icon in her adopted country of France since the 1960s and was considered a timeless Francophone icon, with even the French president paying tribute to her role. Because she embodied freedom, because she sang the most beautiful words of our language, Jane Birkin was a French icon, a complete artist. Her voice was as sweet as her engagements were fiery. She bequeaths us tunes and images that will never leave us. Remembered as France's favourite petite anglaise, Birkin is survived by her two daughters, Charlotte Gainsbourg and Lou Doyon. So a French icon, um, but she did work with people outside France as well, yeah. didn't she? Particularly um, in music after the 2000s or in the early 2000s, amongst uh, some of her non-French collaborators, uh, we had Brian Ferry from Roxy Music. We also had Feist, the Canadian artist, uh, Brian Molko from Placebo. Uh, and her work with Serge Gainsbourg uh, was uh, so iconic that uh, it attracted a lot of attention uh, from British, American and uh, Japanese uh, fans and artists throughout the world. They really wanted to work with her. It was kind of an honour because she was was a muse and they wanted to be inspired as well. Uh, I think particularly to 2006 uh, tribute album Monsieur Gainsbourg Revisited, which features a wonderful duet between uh, Jane Birkin and Scottish band France Ferdinand, which is excellent, but also other uh, covers, um, Jarvis Cocker, Michael Stipe from R.E.M., Portishead, and uh, two years ago she even got on stage in New York with the one and load only uh, Iggy Pop, who's a punk, punk rock legend. There was also her daughter Charlotte, so that's kind of fantastic. Well, Iggy Pop, um has actually uh, tweeted um, about her death. He wrote, um, Jane Birkin was a beautiful and unique lady. He's not the only one, Marianne Faithful, who she sang with um, on the track uh, in Every Dream, Home, A Heartache. Uh, she wrote, we first met several lifetimes ago and from that day I always thought she possessed such beauty and style effortlessly too, um, which we all know is the hardest thing to pull off. And the French fashion designer, um, Frol Balmain, um, Olivia Via Roustang tweeted the French English icon that was on every fashion mood board for so many of us. She was actually a real fashion icon as well, wasn't she? No, absolutely. Effortless is really the word that epitomizes her um, with her, you know, generally white t shirt or shirt, flares, uh, sometimes trainers. Um, she's gone on to, to inspire so many people. Now, we talked about the iconic Birkin bag for which there's still like a waiting list for months and even years for some people. Uh, and that said, even though she said herself, my looks kind of frumpy, I don't really put an effort. She she rocked a baby doll dress with some Mary Janes or, you know, high slit, long ball gowns that made her kind of more of a femme fatale. But I think she seemed really accessible to a lot of women. You know, if you were whatever body shape you were, there was something kind of uh, nice and accessible about her. And current day, um, you know, it girl or style icons like Alexa Chung, Sienna Miller, or uh, even Caroline de Migre with her big fringe kind of ha have a lot, uh, owe a lot to uh, Jane Birkin. Yeah, well, your hair's not dissimilar from yeah. her hair cut, <laughs> is it? Um, uh, a fashion icon and also um, a darling of French cinema, appearing in more than 60 films and working with some of France's most esteemed directors, including Jean-Luc Godard, Agnès Varda and Bertrand Tavernier. She starred in notable movies such as um, Blow Up, The Swimming Pool and Death on the Nile. But her last turn on screen was in a documentary made by her daughter, Charlotte Gainsbourg, in 2021 called Jane by Charlotte. Take a look. Pourquoi apprend-on à vivre sans sa maman il me semble que c'est un but qu'on se donne, s'affranchir à tout prix. J'ai pas envie de m'affranchir.
gosh, it's quite touching to mm -hmm. watch that now that she's gone. Um, Jane had three daughters as well as the actress and singer Charlotte Gainsbourg, the late photographer Kate Barry and the singer Lou Doyon. They've all been guests on our culture show over the years. Here's Lou um, talking about her mum's love of France. My mother has a French flag at home. Uh, she knows this, the lyrics to La Marseillaise. My dad, who's uh, Alsacien, so he's nearly French, you know, doesn't know <laughs> La Marseillaise, would never have a French flag at home. And yeah, we, you know, we marmite in the morning and, and, and drink Horlicks before we go to bed. And, and, uh, and my mum has French strawberry jam. Jane Birkin's daughter, Lou Dwyer, talking about her mum. Final word, Marjorie. I'd say that ultimately she's an artist who had excellent taste, excellent taste that she transmitted to her daughters, curiosity and a know-how when it came to picking the filmmakers or musicians that she worked with, which inevitably led to great art. And I would also say that her last album, Oh Pardon Tu Dormais, Sorry You Were Sleeping, uh, which she worked on uh, with Etienne Dao, is perhaps her most personal uh, interpretation of, of life. And she touches on the tragic death, which is probably one of the most hardest thing a parent can go through of her daughter. To the photographer Kate Berry so I would recommend it absolutely okay we're going to play out with that Marjorie thank you so much we're going to leave you with Au Pardon Tu Dorme from Jane Birkin's um, last album of the same name thanks for watching see you next time Au oh, Pardon Tu Dorme Je ne dors plus tu vois bien Le moment est parfait pour me dire si tu m'aimais si tu m'aimais Oh pardon, tu dormais Ouais, tu m'as réveillé T'aurais pu m'empêcher D'un mouvement de ta main 